Did you ever wonder how fish can breathe underwater? I'll tell you how they do it right after the show. One of the customs at Camp Candy is to never miss a good, scary movie on television. It was one of those nights that we decided to order some pizzas and stay up and watch Nightmare Theater. That night, they were showing the movie Dr. Tongue's 3D Museum of Famous Wax Statues, a classic. You guys, come on out of there. You missed the movie. We can see Fight for Lender here, thank you. Yeah, hey, Nightmare Theater is on. Bruno, come here. What is it, Dr. Tongue? My formula for a wax figure is finished, but I need a subject. Gee, kids, I don't know, maybe we shouldn't watch this. I'll turn it off. Oh, come on, leave it on! Don't turn it off, please. Don't touch that channel. This is fun! <laughs> These movies all start out the same way. There's a knock at the door, somebody's car broke down, they need to use a phone. That's when the spooky stuff starts to happen. Oh, don't worry, it only happens in the movies. Oh, great. Uh, cut it out. Come on, Rick. Look what you made me do. Uh, I didn't do anything. Uh, somebody's knocking on the door. Now the spooky stuff All starts. right, that's it. No more Nightmare Theater. There's a knock at the door. That's when the spooky stuff happens. I tell you, kids have imaginations. Sorry to bother you, but our car broke down. May I use your telephone? It's a business call, not personal. What difference does it make whether it's business or personal? I just asked if we could use the telephone. What, are you trying to make a political issue of this or something? Boy, sometimes you really get on my nerves. Oh. I don't want anybody to think we'd be so rude as to make personal calls at this hour. Well, I'm sorry. You're Dr. Tung the actor, right? Why, yes, I am. They call me Bruno. Glad to meet you. Sure you can use the phone. We were just watching you on TV. Dr. Dung and I are in over 100 3D pictures together. Of course, some went right to video. Co-starred? Co-starred? In half those films, you barely had one line of dialogue. I was the star. Is that a fact? Car trouble, huh? A mechanical malfunction, so to speak. So to speak? So to speak what? English? I told you to get that motor fixed weeks ago. What's the license plate number? Oh, uh, let's see. 336. Oh, no, that's my parents' address. Oh, I've got it. 555. Five, five. Oh, no, that's my girlfriend's phone number. Never mind all that. Just, just go, go to the car and write down the license plate number. I'll be back. Come on in. Meet the campers. This is Rick. Uh, hiya. How do you do? Uh, under the blanket, we have Alex, Binky, Iggy, Vanessa, Theodore, and Robin. Charmed, I'm sure. Campers, say hello to one of Hollywood's brightest stars, Dr. Tongue. Hello. Pepperoni? Yeah, and mushrooms. So, you broke down, huh? Yes, Bruno and I were on our way to a statuette from the Academy of 3D Science and Industry when I heard this pinging. Pinging? Yes. Then the pinging turned into ponging. Ponging? And that turned into clanking and clunking. <laughs> I I'm no mechanic, but it sounds like valves. Is there a mechanic in town? Say, good as new, thanks. <laughs> uh, a mechanic, yeah, yeah. Perry, Perry Gravy, that's it. H has the only tow truck in town I know of. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, oh, can't get anything done with the phone ringing all the time. Gravy's Imperial Service. Perry Gravy said he could fix the car, but it would take all night. 
At least we were sure it was in good hands. Excuse me, John. Who are you talking to? Oh, oh, this is just a voiceover to make a transition into another scene. That's, that's all this is. Why don't we jump ahead to the campfire theme? And I'll show you some 3D. Sure, sure, sounds great, good. That's the great campfire. Everyone has to wear their 3D glasses for this. Did I get all the money? Ready. I'll bet you've never roasted marshmallows before in 3D. But first, how about another log in the fire? Bruno! A log? What? This one? Boy, this 3D effect is really something. Shall I tell you a story in 3D? Oh, we're ready. Oh, boy, I hope this story isn't too scary. Otherwise, I'll never get to sleep. Sorry, boys and girls. It was a night, just like tonight. We had just wrapped our latest picture. 3D, three ring circus of terror. We were hauling the big boa constrictor we used in the movie back to the snake farm. Another one of your shortcuts, Bruno? We seem to be lost. Oh, nonsense. We'll save hours by using these back roads. Oh, is that so? Yes, well, maybe, but, but I can't find out where we are. On the map. Watch out for that tree! Watch where you're driving. Oh, you saw what happened. The tree jumped right out in front of me. Oh, sure it did. Go tell it to the judge. What was that? The boa constrictor has escaped. The boa constrictor has escaped. The boa constrictor has escaped. What happened? The, the boa constrictor, constrictor has escaped. escaped. The, the boa constrictor, constrictor has escaped. The boa constrictor has escaped. I called the garage. Evidently, the problem was in the ignition system. Have you no manners? I was in the middle of a story. Thank you very much for interrupting me. What story? About the escaped boa constrictor. What story? I hate what snakes. I hate spiders more. Yes. Once again, very sorry. He started it. No, I didn't. Hey, Vanessa, is that a boa constrictor behind you? Mm -hmm. Where? Ah, ha, 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 ha. Come on, Rick, that's not funny. What happened to the snake? I sent Bruno into the woods to retrieve the reptile. So what else is new? Three. While Bruno was looking for the snake, he didn't realize that the snake was looking for him, too. I hope we don't lose that snake. If we do, there goes our cash deposit. The boa constrictor made its move. I wonder what's taking Bruno so long. It's been a half an hour. I found the snake. Well, be careful. Don't play too rough with it. Good work, Bruno. Gotcha. Let me out. Oh, no. If I open that door, the snake might get out. I'll let you both out when we get back to the snake farm. Oh, wait. Let me out of here. Oh. oh, just keep your eye on the snake and keep him entertained. Can't start the car without the keys. Okay, everybody, it's time to hit the sack. That night, Dr. Tung and Bruno bunked in my cabin. I guess when you live your life in 3D, ordinary, everyday things can be very entertaining. Here, Bruno, would you like some toothpaste? The next morning, Perry Gravy returned Dr. Tung's car good as new. Did your work include a written warranty? My handshake is my guarantee. Well, I guess that's good enough for me. Bye.
Bye, everybody. See you next time. Wasn't that nice? Dr. Tongue and Bruno gave me a video of their latest movie. And it's in 3D. There are lots of famous dogs, like everybody's favorite collie. Everybody's favorite beagle. And everybody's cute little stray. And then there's Lucky. He's the famous Camp Candy mascot. He may not have a pedigree, but he's warm and gentle. Yeah, Lucky's true blue. He's my assistant, my best friend, my companion, my buddy. He's, he's, he's my dog. <laughs> I'd get choked up just thinking about it. Unfortunately, not everyone agrees with me. We've got to get a new mascot. Lucky's really boring. And he has gross fleas. All he does is eat and sleep. Some mascot. Hey, wait a second. This is my dog you're talking about. And you kids have a lot to learn about dogs. Look. The dog is man's oldest domesticated companion and also his best friend. Dogs are loyal, faithful, and obedient. Talented, too. They'll do anything for their masters. Uh, hold it down, Lucky, will you? <laughs> and he's always thinking of me. Right, pal? Big deal. He can't even do a trick. Are you kidding? Lucky does all kinds of tricks. Prove it. Lucky, freeze. Lucky, lay dead. Lucky, stay. <laughs> Didn't I tell you? Huh? What did I say? But the campers still weren't convinced. Vanessa decided maybe if Lucky looked better, he'd act better. Okay, guys, make him stand up. Now, what look should we go for? Hmm, maybe something softer. I don't think so. Well, it's different. Yes, it's perfect. It's... Oh, there's only one thing left. It's hopeless. Leave me Maybe he's got a disease or something. Yeah, like sleeping sickness. We took Lucky to Nurse Molly for a thorough examination. His nose was wet, his coat was shiny, and he checked out just fine. But Nurse Molly did have one recommendation. Ms. Woodenhouse's Advanced Institute for Canine Control. <laughs> Sounds fun, eh, Lucky? <laughs> Try not to show up all the other dogs, uh, okay, pal? <laughs> Last walkies! There we are now. Left, right, left, right. That's the ticket. Yes, chest don't head up. Keep a stiff upper lip now. That includes you, Mr. Candy. Oh, hey. hey, watch it, Lucky. <laughs> now, left turn. Oh. Oh, hey, watch it, Everybody, give your dogs the command to come. Come, Lucky, come! There's a good doggy. Come! Come, doggy! Jolly bad Cheryl chap. Lowering the standards and all that. What hell? Uh, it's, uh, how you say? Come on. Yeah, he's obviously not the purebred. Um, like, um, who are you talking about? <laughs> Attention! Time for our obedience exercise! Here, Lord Chumley of Chadwick. Here, Mademoiselle Fifi Dummer. Here, 
unlucky. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> oh. Well done, Marcel Marceau. Yes, jolly good one, Snooty. A good show, Contessa. Oh, not bad, Mr. Candy. You're making good progress. <laughs> Frankly, I'm afraid it's hopeless. You mean Lucky's not going to graduate? Not in our lifetime, but you show a lot of promise. Walkies! <laughs> Hasta la vista, loser. I hated to admit it, but my faith in Lucky was beginning to falter. I, I needed time to think, so I parked the bus and went walkies with Lucky. Oh, boy. Time to sit. You know, Lucky... I'm beginning to wonder about you. Maybe you really don't care about me. Get this guy. Three squares a day, a roof over his head. I should have it so good. Come on, boy. You need a little exercise. Lucky, I'm not feeding you until we get back to the camp. Boy, you'd think someone would put up a detour sign or something, telling folks to go the other way. something. Unfortunately, I wasn't paying much attention at the time. Anyway, somehow, Lucky got me back to the bus safely. We're gonna make it. <sighs> I'm really worried. That stupid class is over hours ago. I know. But if John has to drag that dumb dog home, it could take all night. Where am I? Ow! John, what happened? I fell down a hole. Oh, got a nasty bump. Go get Nurse Molly. So, John, how'd you get back here? I don't know. Somebody must have bandaged me and brought me back to the bus and driven me here. Well, who? Lucky. Oh, Lucky. C can you ever forgive me for doubting how smart you are? <laughs> so that's how Lucky saved the day, 
saved my life and proved that he's really an amazing dog. That's my dog. Thanks, pal. Fish don't hold a breath underwater. They don't have to. Fish breathe just like we do. See, it all has to do with water. Water has oxygen in it, just like air does. Fish have special lungs called gills that they use to get the oxygen from the water the same way we get oxygen from the air. If you take a fish out of water, he has the same problem we do in the water. He has to hold his breath. Now, there are some fish that do hold their breath underwater, but they're not really fish. Dolphins and whales are mammals and have lungs. Even though they live in the water, they hold their breath underwater. They take deep breaths through their blowhole and then dive underwater. Well, that's it for today. I'll see you later.